Well, tracking greenhouse gas emissions is one way scientists can measure our influence on the environment. And last week, NOAA released data that shows trends in the two most influential greenhouse gases in 2021. KCRA 3 meteorologist Heather Waldman joins us now. And Heather, what did the data show you? Well, those two gases that you mentioned are carbon dioxide and methane. And according to data from last year, both have increased compared to previous years. And methane increased a record amount for the second year in a row. Methane gas has a powerful warming effect in the atmosphere. It's about 25 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. But methane lingers in the atmosphere for about a decade. Carbon dioxide stays up there for thousands of years, which leads to a much bigger cumulative warming effect. Scientists with NOAA are concerned by recent jumps in methane emissions because it may be evidence of a climate feedback loop. We think there are some signals is uh, acting on top of the long term increase and that's uh, possibly related to the natural wetland emission. And that feedback loop is driven by natural cycles like more rain falling over tropical wetlands, releasing methane locked up in those regions. Not much can be done to reverse that effect, but there are other sources of methane that could be reduced. Yes, one big one has a bovine connection. It's referred to as biological methane. But another source is fossil fuels, which accounts for about 30% of methane emissions. Methane gas is a byproduct of fossil fuel production. So if we add now to try to reduce the fossil methane emission, we should be able to see a decrease in the atmosphere level pretty quickly in a few years. Um, but you know, that's a good signal, but that's not enough because, you know, our big, bigger problem is the CO2. Methane gas is also a contributor to ground level ozone, a serious air quality hazard, especially on hot sunny days here in Northern California. I'm KCRA3 meteorologist Heather Waldman. Back to you.